Okay, here we go. So, yes, thanks for the very friendly introduction. Um, I will see. Um, yes, I just tried to solve my thoughts about um, ICT in the 21st century. And as you see, I will try to focus on knowledge and assessment, but I think it's also important, um, or it's even more important, that how can we um, make the transfer of the knowledge we think is important. Okay. So first thing is knowledge. Uh, what does um, a 21st century teacher need to know about uh, dig digital technologies and why? And I just picked up two papers who I think might be useful to think about it. One is a really theoretical one. Maybe you know it. It's about uh, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technology knowledge, and how these can overlap and what what it's mean, what this means. And yeah, the goal should be the, the middle one, the technological, pedagogical content knowledge. So to combine all these things in one. So this will be a challenge. And the next thing is uh, from the ICT framework from NACE, which is a good thing to start about um, what's important. There's a theoretical layer, but what I find more interesting is Oh, left this. You can find it on the web page. Um, there's also a more concrete su suggestions what you really can do in your lessons. Um, this is a Brazy. So this Brazy is public. You can find it on Brazy.com if you Google my name. So you can look up this link. And yeah, the question is why should teachers know about it? And there's a quote, I tried to translate it from German, so it's maybe not really good English, but there was a question in the book, how can we prepare students from today with tools from yesterday for a future of tomorrow? So because teachers often ask, can't we do it with, without it at all? Okay, um, one of the questions from Christina was, how can we, what does teachers need to know and how can it be assessed? but I think it's important how we can transfer it first. So I try to, yeah, how can we initiate a, um, a progress? And there's a really useful model um, about how teachers professional grow, um, yeah, can be initiated. It's a paper from Clark and Hollingsworth I linked it up so you can read it up. There are four domains that are important for teachers, like uh, external stimulus and salient outcomes. It's like what you need to know and how to assess it. But what's also really important is the domain of practice, professional experimentation, trying new things, and the um, knowledge and beliefs of the teacher. And what I fear, or what my impression is, that we very often give stimulus what you can do, but uh, what I have seen very, really, really seldom in uh, teacher trainings was ask about the personal belief of teachers or even experimentation in lessons because of different reasons. And I think it's all about okay, um, reducing barriers one thing is, one barrier might be distance. We now reducing this barrier, um, like with webinars, like Google Hangout and live stream. But I think we also need to provide really resources. And I put time in front of it because I think it's most important because I think most teachers really don't have the time to experiment in their classroom. And what's really important, encourage them for collaboration. Maybe a suggestion it could be Twitter or Facebook. Okay, and to come to the last point, I will really make it quick. Um, assessment. I d really don't like the word assessment, but because it's of my understanding of how I experience assessment. I think it should include mentoring, reflection, and 
kind of supervision as part of the development, rather than giving someone a mark, how good are you doing your job in, in the classroom? I think it's more like providing help and a, a framework of help, and not just saying you failed. Okay, so this brings me to the last point, um, a little task list. Okay. So task list could be um, just reduce pressure and fear in the classroom and offer appropriate CBD possibilities and encourage reflection and collaboration. So quite easy task list, isn't it? So yeah, that's also, thanks a lot. <laughs>